this very special, this very special day. It's finally here. <laughs> it's finally here. Years of drinking, months of planning. Um, and my one bit of advice to you guys today would be just to take a deep breath and to relax and enjoy things. Um, I want to remind you that everyone's here for you today. As you think back and as you remember today, I want you to remember that you're surrounded by so many people that love and support you guys. Um, that's why we're here today. Um, ben, you pursued Jenny in a relationship. You asked her to marry you. You called her to come here today to this place. Jenny, the surprising thing to all of us is you actually came. <laughs> you agreed to this. Um, I'm just kidding. Jenny, you look beautiful today. Uh, this moment is perfect in so many ways. I'm excited for you guys. Um, I think it's amazing that the Bible begins with the wedding. This speaks to how much God values um, marriages and to what they symbolize. Genesis chapter 2 tells us of this, the first wedding. It says this, the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from man, he made into woman. And God brought her to the man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. In this passage, our Heavenly Father, uh, preparing his daughter Eve to be given to Adam, uh, he's preparing her to be given to Adam to become one flesh. Jay, that's exactly what you're doing here today. You and Stacy have, have loved Jenny. You've been faithful to raise and to prepare her. And today you present her to Ben, similar to how God presented Eve to Adam in the garden. Full of trust, full of support, full of love. And so it's my privilege to ask, who brings Jenny to be married to Ben? I love that. Father, I thank you for these two standing before me today. God, I thank you for each of their lives. I thank you for what they mean to each and every one of us here, Father. And God, today as they come together to be, to be made one flesh, Lord, God, we ask that you would be glorified in this ceremony. And God, ultimately, God, that you would be glorified in their marriage. God, we pray your blessing on their marriage. We pray that you would go with them in the years to come. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Um, guys, on a personal note, I'm extremely thankful for our friendship. Um, all the ways that we've gotten to know one another, and to be honest, to challenge one another, one another has been uh, incredible. Um, I love watching you guys interact as a couple. Um, I think you're the picture-perfect example of the phrase, opposites attract. <laughs> in every way. I don't mean that in a bad way. You're unique and different, each in your own ways, and I love to watch y'all interact. Um, Jenny? In your own words, you are the lovey-dovey type. Um, now, Ben, maybe describe it differently, but in an email that Ben sent to me recently, he described you in a number of ways. Um, he described you as sweet, as patient, as considerate, and he went on to say also that you were a clean freak. Um, <laughs> he meant that in a good way. He also wrote um, that he thought it was pretty awesome that one time when you killed that monster buck. <laughs> Jenny, um, you're, you're tender, you're caring, you're hardworking and diligent. Um, one thing I've noticed about you is it makes you most happy when the people around you are happy. Um, this is evident not only by the job that you work and how you've cared for the children and the babies at Westminster, but it's evident by the ways that you treat and you love Ben. It's very clear. Ben, I um, haven't known you as long, but it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you. Um, and I think the best word that would be used to describe you is intentional. Um, you're very deliberate, you're very purposeful in how you speak and how you act, and I admire that greatly about you, and I know that Jenny does as well. Um, while Jenny may use words like stubborn and smart, um, she really does admire this about you. Um, she describes you as she was writing to me as her best friend, as her teammate, um, as someone who makes her a better person. She wrote, she also wrote this about you. He makes me feel like I'm the luckiest, most protected person in the world. Mm -hmm. I know he cares for me a lot and wouldn't let anything ever happen. I think it's awesome watching you guys. Seeing you two, it's easy, 
it's, um, it's easy to see and it's clear that there's something much bigger going on than just two people falling in love here. Um, God is orchestrating a plan and bringing you two together. This plan started in 2013 um, and it won't stop today. It continues on today. Um, over the past year, I've seen God grow you and challenge you in many, many ways. Um, and in many ways, challenge me too through the whole process. Um, he's brought you two together for a reason. Um, and he has a plan for you. We've discussed this, that God's plan in bringing you two together is for his glory. We've talked about this. In the book that we read by John Piper, um, he said this about marriage. The ultimate thing we can say about marriage is that it exists for God's glory. That is, it exists to display God. Now we see how. Marriage is patterned after Christ's covenant relationship to his redeemed people, the church. And therefore, get this, the highest meaning and most ultimate purpose of marriage is to put the covenant relationship of Christ and his church on display. It's a good way to start this today. It's a clear reminder of every single one of us here that the ultimate reason that God gave us a gift like marriage was so that it would point the world to him and it would make God look. The book of Ephesians also talks about this. It speaks first to the husband. It says this in Ephesians chapter 5. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who, loves his, he who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. Christ has sacrificially loved the church. And so you men, you've been called to love, sacrificially love Jenny in the same way. Um, to put her needs before your needs. As a husband, this includes but is not limited to a responsibility to provide and to protect her. Um, just as Jesus laid his life down for the salvation of the church, so you two have been called to sacrificially love your wife in the same way. Your provision for her should be both spiritual and physical. Physically, you're to provide protection for all her needs in life. This requires a lot of work. Spiritually, you must understand that you are not her savior, but that you have the privilege of pointing her daily to Christ. You have the responsibility of properly modeling what it looks like to follow Jesus. Your protection of her is likewise both spiritual and physical. Physically, you're to protect her from danger, the evils and dangers in this world. Spiritually, you're to guard her from the evil influences and sin that try to come into your home. Then you've been called to lay down your, your life for Jenny and to serve her like no one else before. Christ is your example and model, and my encouragement to you today would be to look to Christ as you seek to do this. You, I think you're going to be an awesome husband. I'm excited to, to see how you guys um, grow. Ephesians chapter 5 also speaks to the wives in marriage. It says this, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. The Bible describes the role of a wife in this passage with the understanding and with the assumption that the husband is properly loving and leading. When this is the case, this makes biblical submission and support easy to do. Now, Jenny, I want to be clear about something. Submission does not mean agreeing with everything that this man says. No, that's not going to happen. Submission does not mean leaving your brain at the altar. Today. Submission does not mean putting your will, the will of your husband ahead of the will of Christ. I heard it best explained in that same book that we read. A wife's submission, submissive heart says, I delight for you to take the initiative in our family. I am glad when you take responsibility for things and lead with love. I think it's just a beautiful picture of what a submissive heart looks like. Ben and Jenny, God is bringing you two together today to love one another, to sacrificially serve one another, to experience the joys and pains of, of growing a family together, to make the hard decisions in life together, all these things. What his word promises us is that as you do these things, you will be bringing him glory and that he will bless you for it. May the ultimate goal of your marriage be the glory and the blessing of God. Now, these things aren't easy to do. Marriage is often very difficult. Um, my charge to each of you today is to remember what your marriage represents. Remember that it is a picture of the gospel. 
is the picture of how Christ has led the church. Remember that you have been brought together by God to be a living display of the gospel. As you make this covenant today, before God, before everybody here, and before one another, let us first remember the price that was paid and the sacrifice that was made by Jesus on our behalf. So now, let's move into our, our time, our, the vows that will be shared today. You guys can turn and you can take one another. Then we'll start with you. Do you, Ben, take Jenny to be your wife, to love her as Christ loves the church, honor and cherish her, showing her affection and kindness and health and in sickness and prosperity and adversity and forsaking all others to keep yourself only under her so long as you both shall live, do you? Jenny? Do you, Jenny, in a like manner, take Ben to be your husband, to love and honor, to support him with faith and tenderness, to follow his leadership? health and in sickness, in prosperity and adversity, and forsaking all others to keep yourself only unto him as long as you both shall live, do you? Thank you. Ben, please repeat after me. I then take you, Jenny. I then take you, Jenny. To be my wife. To be my wife. My constant friend. My constant friend. And my one true love. And my one true love. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or poor. Sickness and in health. And sickness were in health. Till death do you part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy word. According to God's holy word. I pledge you my faith. I pledge you my faith. And my love. And my love. Forever. Forever. Jenny, if you repeat after me. I, Jenny, take you, Ben. I, Jenny, take you, Ben. To be my husband. To be my husband. My constant friend. My constant friend. And my one true love. And my one true love. For better or for worse. Sickness and in health. Sickness and in health. Till death do we part. Till death do we part. According to God's holy word. According to God's holy word. I pledge you my faith. I pledge you my faith. And my love. And my love. Forever. Forever. Now we'll move from the vows to the exchange of rings. Kelly. Um, rings are full of symbolism for a marriage. They're durable. This signifies the strength in a marriage union. The purity of the metal, it signifies the favor of God on this union. And the infinite circle signifies that this bond will last the rest of your lives. So Ben, if you wouldn't mind taking the ring and placing it on Jenny's hand. Repeat after me. With this ring, with this ring, I commit myself wholly to you. I commit myself wholly to you. And only to you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay. Repeat after me. With this ring. With this ring. I commit myself wholly to you. I commit myself wholly to you. And only to you. And only to you. As long as we both shall live. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ben and Jenny, you have come here today before us and before God and have expressed your desire to become husband and wife. You have shown your love and affection, and you have made promises of faith and devotion to each other and to God. Therefore, it is my privilege to pronounce you to be husband and wife. Ben, you may kiss your bride.
reception, which is going to be at the law, because God's in the square. You guys are just missing. Woo!